Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and I just watched the first episode of season 2 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds and honestly I'm very disappointed by it, for some reason I was expecting the show to get better maybe because season 3 of Picard was uh, relatively pretty good and it made me think maybe Star Trek is getting back on track and yet with this episode it felt like watching Star Trek Discovery maybe not as bad but uh, there were a lot of things in it that kind of reminded me of Discovery and also of all the new Trek problems that we had ever since 2009. It uh, feels almost as if I'm watching the same story told in different versions again and again and again. I mean, uh, do you remember in Star Trek Into Darkness how they went to a Klingon planet and confronted some Klingons and some guy with superpowers was beating up all the Klingons and someone was planning to make a false flag attack to ignite a war between the Federation and the Klingons? And you know how they constantly make this joke about every captain needing his own specific, unique catchphrase when he sits in the chair. And so they tell that joke again. And also we have a bunch of scenes of uh, the women standing up to men who are being annoying to show that there are strong female characters and all those kinds of things. And also the way distances don't mean anything anymore. You can now take a shuttle and get anywhere in the galaxy as quickly as the plot requires it to be. And even season 3 of Picard was guilty of that, the way they were zipping around the galaxy, even on a shuttle you can get from one star system to another in seconds apparently. And in this episode we have a direct line by Pike who is taking a shuttle to quote the other side of the quadrant and it will take him 3 days to get there and come back. So why did it take Voyager so long to come back home or why was the Dominion forced to use the wormhole to invade the Alpha Quadrant when they could have simply went uh, through normal space because by the speeds we see in these new shows you should be able to get anywhere you want in the galaxy in a few days. And I know the old Trek shows and some of the movies also did that mistake, you know, Star Trek V. They somehow got to the middle of the galaxy in one day and uh, there was an episode of TNG when uh, Professor Galen was telling Picard how he's going to take a shuttle and uh, pointed with his finger on the map of the galaxy and apparently was planning to do that huge uh, trip in just one day. So the old Trek shows also had that mistake once in a while, but in the new Trek shows it's like they're not even trying, like they're constantly doing this mistake, like that's the norm now and so it makes no sense. Why was the Enterprise the only ship in range if they could simply call for backup and a thousand other ships will show up since it apparently takes only a few minutes to get to another star system. And so it uh, destroys the realism, it destroys the logic of this universe. That's why it is annoying to me. And what's the big deal about just writing a correct dialogue to explain it? You don't have to change the pacing of the episode. You want uh, faster pacing? That's fine. I also want it. Just write it better in a way that makes sense. And then I won't have a problem with it. Just don't mention how long it took to get there. Or simply imply it took a while. And so you don't even have to say specific amount of hours or days or weeks. Just don't mention it. Just imply that some time passed. Leave some wiggle room. Don't make a specific statement. So we had a scene of Pike directly saying it will take me just a few days to get to the other side of the quadrant. I guess we can explain it away that he was exaggerating in his dialogue that he didn't literally mean the other side of the quadrant, but uh, I suspect we're going to get a lot more stuff like that, and so you, you cannot deny that the writers just don't care about those details, which is a shame. So anyway, the episode begins with a shot of Starbase 1, which I actually kind of like because, you know, those uh, domed forests in space look really beautiful and all of that. And so visually, I actually kind of like that Starbase, but uh, they zoom into it and suddenly we see a bunch of small crafts flying all over the place, zipping around it. So I'm immediately thinking, wait, is the Starbase under attack? Why is there a fleet of small ships uh, surrounding it and zipping around it? really close to it in huge speeds, so it looks like an attack scene, like a, a war is starting again or something. And then we see the Enterprise is docked there and we see like dozens of shuttles flying all around it in huge speeds and so what the hell is going on? And apparently nothing, it's just regular routine. It's simply because they, again, they want to show us better special effects and so they show us things which are illogical and inconsistent with the other shows and movies because we never saw such activity for no reason. So they want to show off special effects and that's why they do it, even though it makes no sense. And so it immediately annoyed me because I'm not against special effects. I'm not against showing fleets of ships. You know, that's one of the things I loved in Deep Space Nine, whenever they showed huge uh, fleet battles. 
I'm fine with it, I love it when it makes sense in the story. And here it doesn't. So I guess they did say something about inspections of the ships. So maybe all those shutters flying all over it are part of it. Maybe they're examining the ships from the outside for some reason as part of that inspection. But why are they flying so quickly, almost colliding with each other and all of that? So that immediately kind of, again, gave me the JJ vibes. As I mentioned earlier, how it reminds me of the new movies. You know, there's a scene in this episode of a ship hiding under the surface of a planet and rising from it to space. You know how in all the JJ movies and the new shows, they love doing that thing of a starship hiding somewhere under the surface of a planet, either under the water or underground or in the middle of a planet. And it has to rise, burst out of it and then fly into space. And so how many times have we seen that? It uh, is starting to get silly, in my opinion. He even did that in Star Wars with the Emperor's fleet bursting out of the ground and flying up because they've been secretly building it and they did something like that in this episode. So constantly all these new Trek elements, which might be visually impressive, but they are getting repetitive and uh, also often don't really make any sense if we think about it. And I'll get to it shortly. So anyway, Pike is planning to defend Una in court and they're talking about some amazing female lawyer who they have to get because she's the only one who can possibly save her. And then he says that he will take a shuttle to come talk with her face to face. You know, he's not even taking the ship, he's taking a small shuttle to the other side of the quadrant. You know how in early TNG, shuttles didn't even have warp drive. They always said that the shuttle couldn't have got out so far by itself without a mothership. They imply that shuttles don't even have a warp drive, at least in the early seasons of TNG. Later on, shuttles did have warp drive, but even then they said they are slower than normal ships. So here Pike is taking a shuttle to the other side of the quadrant and he leaves Spock in command of the ship. And Spock is another problem, again, like in the JJ movies, when he was over emotional and unstable and kind of crazy. The same thing happens in this episode. Spock, for some reason, is losing control of his emotions and is behaving in a very un-Vulcan manner. And so that's, again, something that became the norm. You know, in the original show, it did happen once in a while. But normally he would act a certain way and only once in a while if some alien substance affected him somehow then he would lose control of his emotions. It did happen once in a while but in the new shows it keeps happening all the time. So the norm here is that he's always un -Vulcan like He's always super emotional and he's now crying almost like his uh, foster sister Michael Burnham who was crying in every episode despite being raised by Vulcans and taught to suppress her emotions and yet was crying in every episode. So now Spock is that way as well. So now he's in love with Nurse Chapel. And isn't he married? Doesn't he have a wife to bring on Vulcan? So why is he behaving in a creepy way, you know, watching Chapel sleep in the bed and constantly thinking about her and endangering the mission to save her life and all that uh, stuff? And we literally see him crying with tears and uh, screaming and being emotional. So just like in the 2009 movie and like in Discovery when everything is super emotional and over exaggerated. And also they add all the traumatic background to every character in every episode. Like now Dr. McBenga is revealed to have PTSD from the war with the Klingons because he was on some planet on which everyone was slaughtered and there was so much blood that even it was raining blood from the sky and stuff like that. So he's now revealed to have this uh, huge trauma, even though didn't we have a trauma story with him already with his daughter in the previous season and Spock is over emotional and not thinking straight and then he decides to steal the Enterprise. <laughs> so remember the time when Kirk stole the Enterprise in Star Trek 3 and everyone acted so shocked and surprised by it? Well. Shouldn't they have said, what again? Haven't we done this like uh, so many times before? So, and what kills me is how in the very end, there are no consequences to it. Like the Admiral just forgives him and says, oh Spock, you stole the Enterprise, you disobeyed my orders, you faked the warp core bridge, uh, and on and on he could have went. And he said, you know what? Ah, never mind, that's okay. No big deal. And I'm like, what? What the hell? It's like just in like in Discovery, you know, they had a whole episode about some planet with prisoners and they decided to release all the prisoners because they were all held by their own society. But they decided that society is corrupt and so it must be that all the prisoners are innocent and let's just free all the prisoners and not worry about it. So 
And also in the JJ movies, there was that whole stuff with Kirk being like a rebel and he also doing whatever he wants and disobeys the prime directive and also there are no consequences. They only like demoted him for one scene and then a few scenes later, he's somehow back as captain of the Enterprise and there are no lasting consequences. And now in the old movies and shows, they did sometimes do it, but there were some consequences and only because of some luck or some bigger events they managed to get out of trouble. Like they stole the Enterprise, but the movie later, they just happened to save all of humanity. And so they pardoned them for that. So it made some kind of sense at least. And here there is no sense. So Spock was directly ordered not to take the Enterprise there. And then he decides to just steal the Enterprise. And I was uh, thinking maybe in the end of the episode, Maybe he'll explain it away that maybe something was affecting his brain and that's why he was losing control of his emotions and maybe they would take that into consideration that he was kind of mentally unstable for some reason, something beyond his control and so after that speaks, maybe that's why they forgave him. But there was not even an attempt to do that. So he just told the Enterprise, disobeyed orders and then came back and then they just forgave him and nothing bad happens and so what the hell. And also Dr. McBenga and Nurse Chapel just decide to use some drug that will enhance their abilities. Somehow they become super strong and super fast and are able to beat up a bunch of Klingons hand to hand without uh, trouble, you know, just like Khan did in that movie Into Darkness. And there are no consequences either. Like no one told them, hey, wait a second, how did you do that exactly? Or maybe show some uh, physical side effects. If they did something like that, shouldn't there be a downside? Otherwise, it begs the question, why not use it all the time? if there are no side effects. So apparently it's totally fine to use drugs. And so isn't that the reason that number one is in prison because uh, they discovered that she's genetically augmented and it's against Starfleet rules and that's why she's in prison. And yet the doctor and the nurse are using some illegal drugs to make themselves super powerful. And that's totally fine. And also there's a scene when uh, Lan is uh, in a drinking contest with a Klingon and is able to out drink him. She's easily able to drink more than him and he faints and vomits and she is not. And they never really explained what her deal is. There was no indication that she has any superpowers even though she's apparently descended from Khan which is its own can of worms which uh, I'm curious to see what the hell are they planning to do with that because it makes absolutely no sense. But anyway, she's apparently a normal human without any superpowers. That's why she is allowed in Starfleet. And yet she's able to easily defeat a Klingon who is drinking his own planet's famous beverage, the blood wine. And so he should be used to it and she shouldn't be. And yet for some reason she is better than him. And so that's again kind of discovery vibes that women are better than men. And we also had a scene on the bridge of those inspectors coming aboard and they are all men. And... The scene tries to show as if they are being annoying and the, the women in their stations have to stand up to them. They have to talk back to them. They have to resist the complaints of those inspectors. And uh, yet it's written kind of stupidly, which makes me think just the opposite. It makes the women look unprofessional and stubborn and annoying and not the men who are just doing their job. Like they came to do their job of inspecting the ship they must be following the protocols that they were given. It's not like they personally decide to harass them. They are doing their official job. And yet the women on the bridge constantly have to stand up to them and say, no, it's better this way. It's better the way I programmed it and not your silly protocols. And then the scene with Uhura takes the cake when that guy wants to inspect uh, the comm station. And then Uhura says, that it will require her to shut off the communications and they cannot do it because what if they get a signal? And in this scene they are docked at Starbase 1, that gigantic station which must also have its own communication arrays, it must also be scanning space and picking up all the signals and all of that. So what's the big deal of shutting off the systems for a few minutes? So the guy can do his job and inspect it. And Uhura says, no, I will not let you sit at my station. And so she's kind of standing up to him for absolutely no logical reason. And the other women kind of look at each other proudly. They're happy at the way Uhura is handling that uh, man, that annoying man who comes to tell her how to do her job. And so they're putting those guys in their places. And so... It's supposed to be like a strong female character moment and all of that, but it comes off as obnoxious on the other side. Like it makes these women 
seem unprofessional and silly and annoying and not the other way around at least it's not as bad as in discovery if the scene was taking place in discovery then uh, all those men would die in some horrible way a few scenes later because they were an annoying man who dare to tell a woman what to do and so they will get sucked out into space or some other horrible death because of their annoying attitude and so this is what I mean when it's written stupidly. I mean, uh, what's even the point of all of this? Like, isn't this supposed to be an utopian future when people who went out into space are all professionals, you know, morally evolved people and all of that? And yet they're all doing these silly ego games between themselves and all of that. And yes, the old shows also had it once in a while, but it was always with a purpose. It was always part of the story. There was not uh, random scenes of crew members behaving that way for no other reason if there was no connection to any bigger story. Another example in this episode, when we see that little girl, uh, you know, back in season one, there was that episode when the Gorn were like xenomorphs and there was that little girl there who's kind of like Newt in uh, Alien 2 whom they rescued and we see the same girl here and then she tells them oh you have to come and help my parents because my parents are sick and then we see her parents and it's two women who they then treat and then they go away and there was no real story to that as well so it was shown to us for what just to show us that her parents are two women there was no we'd never see them again we never hear what happened to them after that so what was the point of that scene exactly Except if it was just to show to us, oh, you know, parents can be of the same sex. And so, and again, personally, I don't have any problem with it. And I would be totally fine with it if it was part of some actual story that makes sense and not just shoved in here for no real reason except to make that point. And also there was a scene of Spock calling the ship and talking to the new transporter chief who apparently is uh, not a man and not a woman. It's kind of unclear what that is exactly. And again, that scene was there for no real reason. Like, it was just to show that new character, just to show that person of undetermined sex. And so, what was the point of that scene exactly? And you know how in the old shows, they often, you know, they used aliens for those kinds of stories. And they made a point about the story. They want to have a story about genders. And so, they would introduce some alien species who has no genders or has multiple genders. And then we have an actual story about those issues, which is far better to promote your ideas compared to just uh, show us cameos of all those communities. To I guess they want to sh simply show that it's normal in the future, that it's totally normal to have all these different kind of people and no one's making a deal of it. And I guess that's what they're doing, but uh, they're doing it on the expense of the screen time, which could be used better for an actual story. And there is very little story here. So they show us this person of undetermined sex. And that's it, and we don't get any important information related to the actual plot of the episode. Couldn't they do it in a more interesting way? Like, if that was an actual alien who had no genders, that would be so much more interesting. And then they can use it for uh, all kinds of actual stories and actually promote those ideas, you know, with metaphor to real life and all of that. And speaking of strange humans, we also have the new character of this woman who they reveal that she's an alien who is from a very long-lived species and they have lived on Earth among humans for centuries and only came out in the 22nd century and because she's so bored that's why she wants to come with them on the Enterprise and she even helps them steal the Enterprise, she wants to be the new chief engineer and her backstory is kind of really similar to Guinan and yet her species name is something different, not Elorian and so I keep wondering why didn't they just make her an Elorian because her story seems really similar to Guinan's. You know, Guinan also lived among humans for centuries without anyone knowing she's an alien. And uh, this woman also looks totally human without any special abilities that we know so far. So why not just make her an El Orient too? And it's kind of too early to judge this character, but her voice is extremely annoying. She talks in a strange way, I guess to sound really old. So she's talking like this. She's talking as if she barely has a voice left. And so to me, it sounds kind of annoying. Like you can tell it's kind of fake. And so it's just, I don't get it. I don't get why they need to make an annoying voice. And also apparently she personally knows Spock's mother. And maybe that's why she decided to help Spock steal the Enterprise because of who his mother was. She said, she's the first person I came out to. And does Starfleet know that she's an alien or not? Because again, isn't Una on trial for falsifying her records about not revealing that she's an augmented alien when she joined Starfleet? She's now in prison for months for that crime apparently. And yet we have all these other characters 
who did similar things without an issue. So does Starfleet know that this one is an alien since she says that only his mom knows that she is and so that implies that maybe Starfleet doesn't know that. So anyway, back to Spock, he's been all over emotional and he even comes to sickbay. And then the doctor gives him that Vulcan musical instrument and says that it will help him relax, that he has to learn to play that instrument to help control his emotions. The problem with that is that we already saw that Spock has that instrument already. We saw that back in Star Trek Discovery in the end of season two, we saw Spock's quarters and that instrument was there already. So now they're trying to make us think that it was the doctor who gave it to him and that's why he had it in the original show. So it doesn't really make any sense, even internally with the internal continuity. And they don't even get me started on the Klingons because yes, they are, much more similar to how Klingons should be, not just in their appearance, but even their behavior, the fact that, you know, they love to drink and stuff like that. It is a step in the right direction, but now it begs the question, what the hell happened? So who were those clean orcs? Why did they disappear? It's never explained. They never explained it in this episode. The only small clue that we can use to try to explain it ourselves is saying it's a different group of Klingons because uh, they did have a scene in which they said, that their language is slightly different, that it's some different dialect of Klingon language or something like that. So it implies that maybe it's some different group of Klingons and that's why they look so different. But the characters themselves don't seem to react to it in any way. So it's just everyone accepts it's Klingons and it's totally fine. So I have some mixed feelings on this issue because on the one hand, I'm glad we don't have to see the Discovery Klingorks ever again. On the other hand, since we never had an explanation for this mess, now it's even a bigger continuity mess. So Klingon seems to be fluctuating in their appearance. And we had that scene of Lan out drinking a Klingon because she's such a badass woman. And what is annoying to me about this scene is that, uh, you know, it reminded me of a scene from Deep Space Nine when Cisco and his crew had to pretend to be Klingons and go to some Klingon party in which everyone had to drink a lot. And they said that they took some anti-intoxicant to be able to drink with the Klingons and still be able to stand and not get drunk, basically. And so that explains how they're able to drink with the other Klingons without getting poisoned by it and all of that. And also there was a scene in TNG when Worf wanted to drink some tea with Dr. Pulaski and Pulaski had to specifically inject herself with something to be able to withstand that Klingon drink. Otherwise it would be fatal for her because Klingon drinks are fatal to humans. So this stuff has been established and also makes sense just because they're aliens. So it makes sense that their food and drink might be kind of dangerous to you. And yet, Nowhere in this episode was it ever mentioned that maybe it's kind of a problem, maybe we should take something before that to be able to withstand their drinks and all of that, and yet they never do that. And so that also annoys me. And the whole story is that uh, it's some kind of a dilithium mining planet and it uh, has some weird rocks that look like columns that go into the sky somehow. Maybe because of the effects of the dilithium, you know, how in the Discovery, a lot of planets had all those floating rocks and all of that. So maybe dilithium has magical properties and that's how it allows all these strange structures of rocks. So anyway, it's a mining planet. And because the mining guilds made so much money during the Klingon Federation War, because they were selling so much dilithium, they want to reignite that war again for profit. Because, you know, they're capitalists and capitalism is bad according to the show and so uh, that's why they're putting the whole galaxy at risk just for their own profits and that's why she sent that message to the Enterprise which Uhura only picked up because she stood up to that nasty man and also it's silly how they don't have any backup systems anyway like you're telling me that only this one station on the bridge is the only one able to pick up any signals from space and the Starbase itself isn't able to and there is no backup system she has to specifically spend a few minutes to set up some backup systems. So why didn't she do it before? And also that guy is also contradicting himself because at first he says it will take only a couple of hours that they will have no communications. And later he said it will only take a few minutes. So make up your mind how long it will take. So anyway, because Uhura stood up to him, that's why they were able to pick up Lan's signal and uh, Spock then decided to steal the Enterprise. And then they came to this planet and then they're sneaking around on the planet similar to the scene in Into Darkness and they see these new Klingons and no one is surprised by their look but Uhura does say they use some different dialect which at least is some kind of clue to why Klingons are different and then Lan is negotiating to sell something to that Klingon 
and then the Klingon gets annoyed and wants to attack her because she's a tiny woman and once again she stands up to a bigger, stronger man by pulling out what looks like a grenade and threatening to blow him up and everyone there. And that is again something that is very repetitive. Didn't we just see a scene like that in Star Trek Picard when Picard's son pulled out what looked like a thermal detonator scaring everyone and then later it turned out to be something else, it wasn't even a grenade and so here also it turns out to be fake, it's not really a grenade but that Klingon got scared off and did complete the deal with her and meanwhile Nurse Chapel and McBenga got kidnapped and brought to that hidden starship under the surface which they're planning to use for a false flag attack to attack the other Klingons in the system to reignite the Klingon Federation war because they want to sell more dilithium. So why did they even bring them? Oh, it's because they, they have some wounded people because they now say for the first time ever in Star Trek they reveal that photon torpedoes have some strange radiation that is causing sickness. And here we see that uh, he has some PTSD, it reminds him of the Klingon war because he has to treat Klingon patients suddenly. And then he reveals that he always carries around a small vial of green liquid. And they say they have to get to the bridge of that ship to figure out what's going on or to send a signal to the Enterprise to tell them about it. And when I saw that small vial, I assumed it's that same substance we saw in season 1 that uh, whenever they go on an away mission now, they're using some kind of medicine to genetically alter themselves to make them look like the aliens they're uh, trying to infiltrate. So I thought they're going to use this vial to make themselves look like Klingons for a while and that way sneak around without anyone noticing and I thought it's going to be a funny scene of them pretending to be Klingons just like Cisco and his team in the Deep Space Nine episode. But instead it turns out it's not that same substance we saw in season 1, instead it's some kind of super drug that makes them super powerful and able to beat up a bunch of Klingons hand to hand. And so all of that setup was just to have an action scene of the two of them going around corridors and just beating up Klingons. And for some reason no Klingon carries a disruptor or any weapon of any kind, they all come to them with their bare hands and they're easily beating all of them up. And meanwhile the Enterprise is hiding in space inside some asteroid field which is made up of some strange red material which again reminds me of the JJ movies because always it has to have a red something. It's always a red angel, a red door, a red matter, red signals, it's always something red. And so here it's some red asteroid field, I think they said because it has a lot of iron in it, that's why it's red. But isn't iron red only when it comes in contact with oxygen, so meaning inside an atmosphere it will turn red, but why out in space when there is no oxygen, why would iron be red? And so that again makes me think the writers have no clue about science whatsoever. So anyway, after sending the signal, McBenga is unable to escape the ship in time and they're stuck in an airlock. And the Enterprise has to destroy it and then Spock is in a dilemma because he somehow knows that Nurse Chapel is on that ship and so he doesn't want to fire on it to kill her so at no point do they bring up the possibility of maybe just disabling that ship. You know if it's a false flag operation maybe they would have evidence of it if they don't completely destroy the ship, if you just disable it and then they can prove it's not a real federation ship. But no, they just say if we fire at it, we blow it up completely. So Spock is in a big dilemma, he keeps postponing his decision to fire because of his emotions and he's uh, again visibly emotional and crying and all of that. Even though the fate of the galaxy is at stake, he still wouldn't fire. And McBenga and Nurse Chapel decide to eject out into space. And they do it in the last second and barely able to survive when Spock does fire the torpedoes which blow up that ship. And then he beams them back on the Enterprise. And then they're all frozen and then he comes running to the transporter room and is uh, personally reviving Nurse Chapel. The only thing missing was slapping her around like in that movie The Abyss. That would have been great or at least do some mouth to mouth or something. So he just kind of uh, resuscitates her by doing some CPR on her chest and then she wakes up and says why do you have to be so rough? And then he's visibly crying with tears in his eyes and all of that. And then he has to explain everything to the captain of that Klingon ship which kind of refuses to believe him and says you are planning to attack us and all of that. And then Spock keeps saying but Vulcans do not lie and then that Klingon somehow believes him. Even though you know earlier in the episode you know that uh, Guinan woman was questioning Spock if he's planning to steal the Enterprise and he didn't know how to respond and then she said oh Vulcans cannot lie and it's kind of strange also doesn't make sense because 
He was in the middle of the process of faking a warp core bridge in order to disobey orders and to steal the Enterprise. So isn't that lying? Isn't faking a fake warp core bridge also a form of lying? So it's kind of ridiculous in the same scene to suggest that Vulcans cannot lie when he's literally doing something similar. And so in the very end he tells that Klingon captain that Vulcans do not lie and then yeah, the Klingon says, I only believe a man when I see him face to face. And then they go down to the planet and then Spock is also drinking with the Klingons. And then the Klingons really love him. So at least the Klingons do seem more like the Klingons I used to like from TNG and Deep Space Nine and all those shows in which the Klingons were fun. It's not just about their appearance. It's because the Klingons used to be fun with stuff like this. Because they used to joke around, they used to laugh, they used to party and all of that. And so that made them a fun species. Unlike the Klingon orcs in Discovery who are just nasty and boring and depressing. So it is definitely an improvement. And then they come back to the starbase and then the Admiral says, uh, he sees the Spock has a hangover and then says that hangover is your punishment and then just forgives him for everything. So he faked a warp core bridge, he disobeyed the direct order by the Admiral and it's all just fine, there are no consequences. So I think it's kind of ridiculous. And in the very end of the episode, they reveal why the Admiral forgave him. He said, uh, Spock, just saved us from a, a war on two fronts because they're worried about some other big threat and they show us some holographic map. And my first uh, thought was the Romulans, even though, you know, the Romulans shouldn't really be encountered until TOS, since Kirk was the first one who fought them, but I was uh, thinking maybe they're going with some secret war kind of thing, maybe something that would not be made public. Maybe the Romulans were the ones trying to reignite the war between the Federation and the Klingons as they often try to do in the time of TNG, so... That would at least make some kind of sense. Or maybe they're bringing up some totally new villain, but in the end it's revealed to be the Gorn again. The Xenomorph Gorn, of course, not the same one that Kirk encountered. Which again is a continuity issue, because if Kirk, we know, is going to be in the season, and they keep fighting the Gorn again and again and again, how the hell would Kirk not know anything about the Gorn when he meets them in TOS, if his own ship fought them so many times before? And if they were such a big threat to the Federation as we see in this final scene. So to summarize, I do not think it was a very good episode. We didn't really see anything really new or original at all. It's just the same kind of stuff that we saw again and again and again. Like that scene when Spock takes the chair and they ask him, what are you going to say? Every captain has to have his own special saying. And then he says, I would just like to ship to go now. And it's supposed to be funny, but it's not because we've seen this joke. It was funny once, when the first time I saw it was in Lower Decks, when they made fun of every captain has to have his own saying. But they repeated that in Star Trek Picard, and they did it on this show. And it's getting annoying because it's not that funny to keep repeating it. And also it makes no logical sense also, because how many captains are there? It's not like they only have a few ships. We have like thousands of ships, right? So if every captain has to have his own unique saying, then most of it will be taken already. You cannot invent something new. And you know, when Picard said engage, I always just assumed that's the official term they should be using like tech-wise. I don't think it's something that he just invented to sound cool and unique. I think that was the official term that should be used. You know, I guess make it so was a unique way of saying something. You know, Jellico said, get it done instead. So I guess every captain is adding some uh, new way of speaking, but it doesn't mean that it has to be the case that every captain has to have his own unique phrase and all of that. So I think this whole joke is stupid. And too many things in this episode felt repetitive, meaning it's similar to the JJ movies and it's similar to Discovery and it's similar to Picard, you know, with the grenade. And the things we saw just a few weeks ago and we see again now and so where is the originality where are the new ideas where is new stories the new adventures so it's all repeating itself again and again once again a false flag some villain he wants to reignite the war with the klingons and they have to go down to that planet to fight some klingons to stop it and so nothing new at all it's all stuff we see again and again like someone is getting ejected into space and then freezes immediately we just saw that with vadik a few weeks ago so it's all repetitive and that's why it's kind of boring in my opinion. If I hadn't seen the other shows and I would just watch this episode, maybe it wouldn't feel as bad. But uh, because I did watch all the other ones, it just seems to me they don't really have any new ideas at all. They just keep repeating the same stuff again and again in slightly different variations. You know, Spock is going crazy. Spock is over-emotional. Spock is in love with Chappelle. 
and he's looking over her as she's sleeping, even though he isn't he married, doesn't he have a wife on Vulcan, so why is he behaving like that? And the fact that uh, there is no consequences to everything, that Spock can do something so crazy as steal the ship, and there is no excuse he can use to get out of it. You know, if they said that something, some substance affected his brain, and that's why he was behaving in such a rebellious manner, and he wouldn't do it again under normal circumstances, and that's why they forgave him, then they could be fine with it. But there was no such excuse. And also Dr. Mabenga and Nurse Chapel using some illegal drugs to make themselves super powerful, and then there are no side effects of that, unless they do something with that in the next episode. If they'll have the shakes in the next episode and they'll have some terrible nightmares or something. You know, have some kind of negative side effect as not to encourage people to use drugs. That's another problem I have in the new Trek shows. They constantly show us that, you know, drugs are cool, drugs are fun, and drugs can make you super powerful and beat up a bunch of Klingons with no, with no consequences. There are no side effects to it. So why do they not always use that? if it's so easy and convenient. So the next time they're in some dangerous situation, I will ask, why don't you pull out your vial of super steroids once again to become super powerful and beat everyone up? Why only that one time? And so that's why it doesn't make much sense. So anyway, that's all I really had to say about it for today. Let me know what you think, and we can discuss all of this in the comments below. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.